Good afternoon. Jeff Mitchell from Norwich, Ontario, Canada. I live on a fur farm, exactly onto a mink ranch and a mixed farm. In 1949, my father bought his first four female and one male mink. In 1951, he married my mother, and she brought mink from her father's farm as well. Over a period of time, the farm grew to 500 females. And after I was out of college and came home and took the farm over myself, I've grown to have 3,200 females here, produce roughly 13,000 mink a year. Ever since I was a small child, I've always been involved with the mink. We came home from school, we helped with chores. We went to school and said I would be a mink rancher. Well, I have a 150-acre farm. 100 acres of it is workable. I work with about 8 to 10 hired men. Good employees, mainly younger fellas who work, work hard here, enjoy what they do and keep me young. Present in our operation here, my brother, who's been an accountant and away for a number of years, is at home working with me. And I have a nephew working with me at home. I live in a, in a rural community, and if I can create employment for somebody by doing something else, I'm really glad to do it, because that brings a job into our community. And we try to keep our people busy at home first. There are many other specialty businesses here. We're within an hour range of three car plants. So the, the automotive sector is the dominant effect on our community. But where we live here is basically a rural farm community. Uh, this fellow raises hogs. This fellow milks about 400 goats. The next farm here milks 50 or 60 dairy cows. The next farm around the corner is a hog farm. Here's a pretty field of cows up here. There's no calves. We're going to pull right in this place. These are my cows. Having and looking after the cattle, it's a little different different part of my life, something different to learn about, to watch, and to grow. Each phase of, life of agriculture is different, and we all have different ways of doing what we do. It's the same when you look across at Malin's farm, there's cattle, horses, work horses, driving horses, sheep, all in the same field. Sometimes some of us have gone way forward in how we've separated and specialized and everything. And some places, life hasn't changed near as much as we would, everybody thinks it has. The mink feed is based mainly on an 80-85% meat diet. The fish is taken, the fish is filleted, we get the head and the frame and the entrails. We get beef tripe, which is entrails. We get liver byproducts, kidney byproducts, which are organ meats. These are all the parts of the animal that a wild animal goes for first, after it's made a kill. And then we also blend a cereal with it with, with vitamins and minerals and to make a completely balanced diet. In fact, the mink probably have a lot better diet than a lot of young people and a lot of older people in our society today. They probably have a lot better diet on a regular basis than they ever would in the wild. They don't, they're not out fighting, they're not running miles looking for their food. They have food on a regular basis, fresh water, a clean dry nest, and they're monitored to to be able to survive, because if they don't survive, we don't survive. In the fall, when we harvest the mink, this is the cart we use. We go along and put the mink, one mink at a time goes in with carbon monoxide, and then they, they die a very quick death. 
in the fall after the mink are harvested and skinned, the carcasses are sent to either to be used for compost and or the fat goes to be rendered and to go to use for biodiesel. The rest of the carcasses and the manure and bedding that was in the sheds under the pens all gets either composted and then returned to the land or returned to the land directly as manure to furnish next year's crops, which grow exceptionally well on my farm because of said manure. 